Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at a Centurion Arms rifle that we've already reviewed, but we're going to be having some addition. We're going to have a new upper receiver to take a look at. This review was probably uh, uh, maybe six, eight months ago, nine months ago, uh, where the whole purpose of this rifle was a Centurion rifle that I contacted Monty. I said, I want to build a specific rifle that I'm going to be used to, using to test all my optics, some accessories, and I want to spec it out. I want it to be one of your rifles. So I had Monty custom make this rifle for me to my specifications with mostly all of his parts. Uh, we're going to go over this really, really quick, but we started off with a 16-inch barrel. Now, the barrel I wanted was a Cold Hammer Forge chrome line barrel. I did not want nitride. I wanted a Cold Hammer Forge, which, we just, which he, what he manufactures. I also wanted a mid-link gas system. So I wanted the ideal barrel, the ideal gas system, and there's something else I wanted as well. Um, I am very fond of the ARMS 40L folding backup sights. Now, to my dismay, I have not seen these for sale in a long time. Unfortunately, after Dick Swan passed, many of his products have gone by the wayside. Um, what was also special about this, I had only a few of these that were referred to as the OEM models, which were ones that you drill and pin versus that you use uh, set screws. So I had sent this site over to Marnie and said, I want this one drilled and pinned uh, and put on, uh, on the barrel. The handguard, I wanted one of his uh, C4 rails. Again, C4 rails, uh, I, I like quite a bit. I'm, you know, I do enjoy his, uh, his, uh, his other ones as well, uh, the CMRs. But I, didn't, I generally prefer the C4 rails because it uses a standard barrel nut. Uh, and it clamps on there. Again, it's fully free-floated. Uh, you also have a more, more real estate on here with a, with a QD point. Uh, we also have an ASR mod on here because I use a Saker 556 uh, or a 35M uh, uh, Salterco suppressor on here as well. Looking in the back, we have a uh, Centurion Arms upper and lower receivers, uh, both forged. We have an ambidextrous Talon, uh, Talon safety, a standard mil spec type magazine release. We have a, a, we have a forward control design, uh, larger flap uh, ping pong pedal on the left hand side. And we have the Rear, uh, rearward assist charging handle put up by Springfield Armory, which is a very, very useful tool uh, that I'm quite fond of, uh, which actually is useful where a forward assist is not, because a forward assist, you're going to be jamming a cartridge in and causing and inducing more malfunctions than you're actually fixing. This is if you actually get one that's stuck, this will assist you in breaking uh, that bolt to get it get open. Receiver extension, uh, six position. Uh, this has a... Uh, Voltor stock on here, which is one of my favorite stocks. They're, they're IMOD, Magpul grip on here. And the trigger I chose on here was a Geisley uh, RSSA. So this was completely kitted out for what I wanted. Arms back upside as well. And as you saw from the video, this rifle was absolutely perfectly gassed. It shot perfect. The bolt carrier I have in here is something I'm going to show you in a little bit. I don't know if I'm supposed to show that to you or not because it's something that Monty sent me as a prototype. But uh, I got excited about it, so... Uh, it's something that me and him had talked about for quite some time, but we'll look at that in a few minutes. So this is the rifle that we already looked at. So I had a conversation with Monty on the phone, and he said to me, what is it? What, what, what would your ideal barrel length be for, for military use? Well, I do uh, particularly care for uh, the 14 and a half inch barrels. Uh, they are, they are they're, they're certainly a good barrel uh, for military use. They're not too big, they're not too short. So I think they're a little more ideal. Again, 16 inches has always been my favorite uh, overall, but for a military grade, uh, there probably is a better there is a better way to go. So he asked me, what did I think? Well, the barrel that we talked about was the SOCOM barrel. The 14 and a half inch SOCOM barrel, heavy barrel, was the barrel that is now in use by the US government. It corrected all of the early issues of the global war on terror because the M4 was not designed to be a infantry rifle. It was designed to be a lightweight carbine, a carbine for, um, for folks that were not in combat, people who were more of just, uh, they were in some kind of a rear echelon job. Well, when the M4s got out into the, into combat, they were getting in, in, in engagements with heavy firefights. The barrels were overheating. These guns were not designed for that. SOCOM saw that immediately uh, with their breaking engagements where they were doing full auto and they were bursting barrels. So Crane went ahead and developed a 14 and a half inch barrel that was a heavy barrel, referred to as a SOCOM barrel, which they basically had two slots that were cut in the side so you could install the M203 grenade launcher. And as soon as that went on that rifle, all those problems went away. 
that rifle would shoot over 900 plus rounds before you would have an issue with that failure. Um, the overheating issue was pretty much a thing in the past. It was the ideal, and now we have a true assault rifle. So I said, I like a 14 half inch barrel. I would like a SOCOM barrel, but I want a mid-length gas system on it. And I also want those slots gone too, because those slots gone were part of the area where the uh, the barrel would erode, it would cause the failures. So I wanted a full length uh, heavy barrel, and I wanted to go with a mid-length gas system. So what did Monty do? That's exactly what Monty sent me. And we see that barrel right here. So for the most part, what we have here is the exact setup you previously saw with a 14 and a half inch barrel, mid-length gas system, heavy barrel, cold hammer forged, chrome lined, the best of every world that I could probably think of. And of course, I did have one left of my uh, 41 uh, folding sights from arms, my last one. I sent that to him and had him put that on there for me. And I put my ASR mount on it, and here you do. Here you have it. So, so far as I know, he is the only one at this point who is making a barrel that is 14 and a half inches, mid-length gas system, cold hammer forged with a chrome lined barrel. And to me, this was ideal. And today, for the first time, I got that out and I got to fire it. And this thing was perfectly gassed. Uh, without the can on it. Uh, ejection pattern was around uh, 3, 4 o'clock. Moderate recoil, very low recoil with 5.56 full power ammunition, uh, which means this thing has a lot of time to grow for as far as gas port erosion. If it's shooting uh, at 3, 4 o'clock right now, it's giving it a lot of leeway once you start getting gas port erosion and you start getting more gas and you start speeding up your cycle rate for it to incrementally uh, move forward from more gas being introduced into the system. Again, the sound suppressor that I used was the Saker 556. Went right on there. Uh, again, these are, this is a typical baffle can, so you do get some of that gas in your face. I will say that this charging handle uh, is a little on the oversized, so it does get, keep you from getting some of that gas right in the face. Um, so this is what's special about this is this barrel. Uh, again, I kept everything else the same, the same accessories, uh, the same uh, types of flashlights. This is a streamlight flashlight versus uh, this was a, this is a Surefire flashlight on the other one. But basically the same configuration. We have uh, aim points on here versus DI optic on the other as far as the sights were concerned. Uh, this is the, gets out of the way right there. Um, the bolt carrier on here is the same one we had in the original one, which was the uh, bolt carrier was Yankee Hill machine chrome plated uh, with the uh, with the HM products uh, improved bolt, which has the bottom uh, the bolt which is uh, is is still intact, so you don't have the Campton hole that's going all the way through it. So one more thing I want to show you is something that came out that was new. Uh, I talked to Monty about uh, bolt carriers. He goes, well, what is your favorite kind of a bolt carrier? I said, uh, my favorite bolt carrier is chrome. I believe that chrome is the best kind of bolt uh, carrier finish that's out there still, uh, to my opinion. And the one thing that I couldn't figure out for the life of me, why nobody had a captive firing pin retaining pin. One of the most uh, heavily lost parts in the, mil in the military, people in the field carry spare ones because if they were to lose that in the field, their, their weapon is, is useless. So I said, well, we need a captive system on here too. So, Monty sent me a prototype that he did, which was captive. So, basically, that held, it's held in place by a, by a pin. So, once your, once your firing pin's in there, you just close that right up. You close that right up, and there you have it. Now, this one here is prototype. I mentioned uh, he'll make some changes eventually where uh, he'll get that to stick in there with a rubber O-ring or something along, 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 those, uh, along those ideas. But this was ideal for me, again, chrome with a captive firing pin retaining pin. So I was very happy to see this as well. You have a standard mill spec type carrier key on here. Uh, the bolt that I put in here was, again, the HM uh, with the, the bottom, uh, which is, is covered up. So you have, much, you have a stronger bolt, so it's far less likely to break. I also did, on both of these bolts, uh, put the improved Springco uh, ejectors uh, and extractor springs on them. So we had that as a reliability enhancement, and this is very similar to that of the Knight's uh, armament where you have the sand cutting grooves on the bottom uh, there too. Now, I'm not sure he wanted me to show you this or not, but uh, I'd love to show you that Monty is working at some new things, and we, we do talk a lot about uh, a lot together about these things. So I think what we're going to do now is go to the range, and we're going to see how this one shoots.
Well, overall, what do you expect? Uh, this thing shot 100%. Uh, again, the, the recoil was extremely low. Excellent ejection pattern. Of course, when you put the can on there, it does increase your uh, your cyclic rate. So you'll see that you have a shift where your uh, ejection pattern starts moving more towards 1, to, one 2 o'clock. Again, you're adding at least two to 300 uh, PSI uh, with the, the can. You know, you're working at generally around, you know, say, say 52,000 PSI. You're going to be adding at least a couple hundred more uh, to with, with the can that's going to overpressure it. So you're going to drive that, that action back uh, a lot faster. This has an H2 buffer. Again, both these barrels, mid-length, heavy, you know, heavier profile barrels, they both utilize the H2 buffer anyways. So it's uh, it is does have the proper buffer. Uh, this whole system back here is geared up with this. This rifle is set up for 5.56 NATO ammunition. I don't fire a wolf. Um, I don't fire underpowered ammunition. Most ammunition I shoot is 5.56. And if it is 2.23, it's, uh, it's higher pressure government ammunition. So uh, the gun works perfect uh, as designed for military ammunition. So as you saw, we were shooting in our challenge targets. Again, uh, I, I tend to much more enjoy shooting steel targets than I do uh, paper targets. So if you guys are interested in getting any steel targets, take a look at the, the challenge target website. Use code uh, SAS and you can save 10% on any one of the, the steel targets that you have there. And those of you guys who have these types of rifles, for as far as cleaning is concerned, we also have a, a, a code for uh, Otis where you can save 15%. If you use code SAS15 on their site, and they can get you 50% off of anything in their lineup. Now, for a rifle like this, there is one specific cleaning kit that stands out amongst them all. It's the MSR AR kit, uh, which uh, some of the, one of the bone tools was one of the projects I worked on while I was there. That has everything that you would need to maintain this rifle, uh, including the bone tool, which has a carbon scraper on the back. Now you get some you get some more into the uh, more elite kits. Uh, you uh, you'll have some where they do have cleaning rods. The purpose of the cleaning rods for the Otis kits is only to if you have to, to assemble because you get to knock out a a, a cartridge gets stuck in the chamber. But those defender kits and those other military kits uh, they do come with them because the military requires that the rods be in there. But they're just generally not what you use. They use they use the cable. The cable is a much better cleaning system uh, for that. The cleaning kits will be linked in the description below. So if you guys are looking for some cleaning gear, take a look at Otis. So we do hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better share. Thank you.